Aluminum track wheels can range in price anywhere between $100 and upwards to $1,000. And if you're looking for carbon track wheels, well, your bank accounts and your imagination is the limit. All track wheels though essentially do the same thing. Be round and spin so you can get from point A to point B. So what do you get when you spend more and is spending more on track wheels even worth it? Let's find out. For painstaking design made to give you the best, check out our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles, linked at the top of the description. What's up, I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one. And of course, we're going to be talking about a lot of specific wheel sets that I recommend at each price point. If you're interested in that, feel free to check those out linked in the description at any time during this video. First up, let's talk about those cheapo fixed gear wheels that cost around $100. These will come on a lot of stock entry-level fixed gears, and you'll either be getting no-name rims or rims from a budget brand like Weinman, Alex, or Vuelta. These will be laced to equally budget sealed bearing hubs or even loose ball bearing hubs. And these will be machine built with greater tolerances to keep costs low. But on the upside, they are really affordable. On a bike build, the frame and the wheel set are easily the most expensive items, and you can save a good chunk of money by going with a more affordable wheel set, while still being able to get your wheels in your favorite fixie color. Please don't though, I think they look awful. It's your bike though. Although aluminum track wheels can cost up to 10 times as much, these $100 wheels are still wheels. They're not track wheels exactly, I'd say they're more fixie wheels, but they still get the job done of spinning and turning and getting you from point A to point B. With occasional use. And I say occasional use here because the build quality on these wheels aren't going to be great. A lot of these $100 wheels will come with loose ball bearing hubs that will require regular maintenance if you don't want your wheels to ride like the bottom of a bag of Doritos. And because they are machine built, they're not going to be as stiff and as durable as hand built wheels. That means that they'll come out of true more easily and more often, which can lead to jittery braking and a squirmy ride quality. If you plan on sticking to your stock affordable wheel set for daily abuse, it's likely to require a lot of maintenance and a lot of truings in order to keep a reasonably nice ride quality, which can be more expensive in time and in money in the long term. You also have pretty limited choice at this price. You're either going to get 30 millimeter rims or 42 millimeter rims, but of course they come in lots of colors because priorities, and the rim's deeper profiles combined with the less than great build quality means that you're getting a heavier rim that won't be built as stiffly and won't be as durable as something with comparable specs at a higher cost, which means that you're pretty much getting the worst of both worlds. Quality control will also vary greatly at this price. The finishes won't be perfect on every single set of rims, and in my experience, I've even had loose bits of metal stuck inside the rim that tingles around when you spin the wheel. But you know what, that's fine for a lot of people. If you're on a really tight budget and you're unsure if you want to sink more money into cycling, these are still wheels, they'll turn, they'll get from point A to point B, they'll get the job done. And they'll be good enough as long as you're someone that doesn't care too much about ride quality. But since you're watching this channel, I would imagine that you do at least care a little bit about ride quality. That's where the entry-level track wheels come in at around $200. These wheels are still going to be machine built, but they'll be laced to sealed bearing Novatech or Formula hubs, which I always say are a great value for the money. And they'll be built with rims from reputable brand names like Velocity, Mavic, or H Plus Sun. The biggest upside to these wheels is that you get a really big upgrade all at a reasonable price. They do cost two times as much as $100 wheels, but they are twice as good. The seal bearing Novatech and Formula hubs are smooth, durable, and capable of building a really tight wheel, and the hubs will require very little to no maintenance in order to keep them running smoothly. And when it comes to rims, you get a lot of choices to best complement your riding style, whether you're a sprinter, a climber, or a long distance rider. A lot of the most popular track wheels are in this price range, like the Velocity DVs, Mavic Open Pros, and H Plus Sun Archetypes and TB14s. And even with all those rim choices, you can still choose between machine sidewall or non-machine sidewall, and if you go with Velocity, between a whole bunch of colors. These reputable brand names also have better design. The rims work to balance weight, durability, aerodynamics, handling, and stiffness. Compare that to rims that cost half as much where they're pretty much trying to balance, well, does it look cool? Two, is it round enough? 
and three, can we make it cost less? Along with those reputable brand names comes better quality control. The finishes are just going to be a lot prettier and it'll be very unlikely to get a rim that is misshapen or has a stray bit of metal inside. On the downside though, they are still machine built so they're not going to be as durable or as stiff as a hand built wheel but a lot of them are built with stricter tolerances compared to something at a much lower price. With that said though, you can still take them to a reputable wheel builder to have them tensioned up. Another downside is that the choice for hubs is pretty limited. You're either getting seal bearing formula hubs or Novatech hubs, and while these are excellent for the price, they're going to be 32 holes and three cross lacing. So if you're looking for either a higher spoke count for more durability or a lower spoke count for weight savings, you're probably going to have to spend a little bit more. Track wheels in the $200 price range are still great for most people. You can get a durable all-rounder wheel like the Velocity DP, a lively riding all-rounder wheel like the H Plus Sun TP14, or an all-rounder all-rounder wheel like the Mavic Open Pros. These wheels can handle the street, they can handle the track, all at a reasonable price. But maybe you're looking for a wheel set that's a bit more purpose-built, and that's where the mid-range track wheels come in at around $300 to $500. Builds here try to maximize performance with lower spoke counts and higher spoke tension. Here you can get true track training and racing wheels that are also great for the street, like the Mike Pistards, aka the Poor Man's Mavic Ellipses, or the Mavic Ellipses, aka the overpriced Mike Pistards. On the street-oriented side of mid-range fixed gear wheels, you can get something like the Wobby Standard wheel set or the Wobby Sub-15s, which will be the lightest wheel set that you can get at this price and beyond. Or if you want wheels that are laced to hubs that are fancier than the standard Formula and Novatex, you can choose from the mid-range Mike, Grand Comp, and Suzu Pro Max hubs. The biggest benefit here is that although these wheels are off-the-shelf components, they are hand-tensioned. This increases the durability and stiffness of these wheels, which is especially important considering that a lot of these wheels have lower spoke counts. And depending on your component choice, you can even do a fully custom wheel build at this price to best suit your needs. And of course, these mid-range wheels are pretty nice, and nicer components means more fixie points coming soon. As for the downside though, there aren't really many. Just keep in mind though that after around $350, you really start to see diminishing returns. If you're like me and you ride a lot and you're very particular about the ride quality of your bike and you like the balance of lightweight stiffness and durability that these wheels have, then this price range is going to be it. I ride the $350 Wabi Sub 15 wheels on my own bike and honestly, if I got anything nicer than them, it would just be unnecessary fixie flexing, i.e. a waste of money. The ride quality is amazing on these wheels, and the fact that their hand tension gives them a surprising amount of durability considering the lower spoke counts. Or if you just like nicer craftsmanship and can afford it, then you have a lot of choices at this price range as well. But if you're looking for the absolute highest levels of craftsmanship and durability in your track wheels, then high-end track wheels are going to be it at around $600 to $1,000. Here you can choose pretty much any components you want as long as they're aluminum and do your own custom build to best suit what you want. That means choose your spoke type, whether that's bladed or standard, choose your number of spokes, choose your spoke lacing, choose the rims that you want as long as they're aluminum and choose your favorite bomb-proof hubs from Philwood Paul or Dura Ace. They'll perform and ride exceptionally well and they'll be very durable. Almost too durable. Like you might have to consider including the wheels in your will. So you get overkill build quality and durability and you're riding on a work of art for dunking on your fixie friends. But the cons though, of course, is the price. And again, after $350, although those wheels would be better, you really start to see diminishing returns. But if you want the nicest fixed gear that money can buy, no matter how marginal the gains are, high-end track wheels will be for you. It's the most durable that money can buy, and in my eyes, the most beautiful that money can buy, but it's not the most expensive that money can buy. That's where high-level competition track wheels come in at around 1,000 to 3,000 and up. Carbon track wheels balance varying degrees of weight and aerodynamics. They're super specialized wheels made for specific events, races, and strategies. You can choose between disc wheels, tri-spokes, quad spokes, five spokes, traditional spokes, carbon spokes. As long as you have the money, 
it can be yours. And the pros of these astronomically expensive wheels? Well, they're for the pros and they can be the difference between winning and losing a race. They are pure performance for specific conditions. And as for the cons, if you're even thinking about using these wheels for the street, you don't need them, but maybe that's a good thing. So where is the sweet spot for track wheels? At what price do you get the most wheel for your money? And at what price does it become too expensive and unnecessary for most people? Well, there's two sweet spots. One is at $200 if you're on a really tight budget and you want to upgrade to something a lot nicer than your stock wheel set that came on your entry level fixed gear, then $200 will be plenty. And then there's a second sweet spot at around $300 to $350 because here you start seeing a lot more hand -built Built wheels. You start to experience some diminishing returns because they cost about 75% more than $200 wheels, but they are about 50% better. The ride quality is noticeably nicer and the wheels will be noticeably more durable. If you can afford or if you can wait to save for something like the Wobby wheels or the Mike Pistards, get these hand tensioned wheels instead since you can save money in the long run. They're a bit more durable so you won't have to get them trued as often and since the ride quality is so nice, you're less likely to want to upgrade beyond them. And speaking of being done with upgrades, our channel sponsor Wabi Cycles has lightweight bikes with a buttery smooth, lively ride quality that only top shelf steel can bring. And between you and me, don't tell Wabi about this, but I actually think that Wabis are the nicest riding bikes that I've ever ridden. And I would say that even if they weren't sponsoring the channel. Wobbies are specced with no-nonsense, high-performing components, and even a bike snob such as myself can't rationalize replacing the stock and all crank sets with my favorite Sugino 75s because they ride just as nicely as Sugino 75s. So if you're looking for your fixed gear for street riding that you'll never need to upgrade again, consider checking out our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles, linked at the top of the description. Stop watching me if you haven't ridden your bike yet. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.